In the previous video, we used k-means to cluster the iris samples into three clusters. But how can we evaluate the quality of this clustering? A direct approach is to compare the clusters with the iris species. You'll learn about this first before considering the problem of how to measure the quality of a clustering in a way that doesn't require our samples to come pre-grouped into species. This measure of quality can then be used to make an informed choice about the number of clusters to look for. Firstly, let's check whether the three clusters of the iris samples have any correspondence to the iris species. The correspondence is described by this table. There is one column for each of the three species of iris, Setosa, Versicolor and Virginica, and one row for each of the three cluster labels, 0, 1 and 2. The table shows the number of samples that have each possible cluster label species combination. For example, we see that cluster 1 corresponds perfectly with the species Setosa. On the other hand, while cluster 0 contains mainly Virginica samples, there are also some Virginica samples in cluster 2. Tables like these are called cross tabulations. To construct one, we're going to use the pandas library. Let's assume the species of each sample is given as a list of strings. Import pandas and then create a two column data frame where the first column is the cluster labels and the second column is the iris species so that each row gives the cluster label and species of a single sample. Now use the pandas cross tab function to build the cross tabulation, passing the two columns of the data frame. Cross tabulations like these provide great insights into which sort of samples are in which cluster. But in most data sets, the samples are not labelled by species. How can the quality of a clustering be evaluated in these cases? We need a way to measure the quality of a clustering that uses only the clusters and the samples themselves. A good clustering has tight clusters meaning that the samples in the cluster are not a bunch together and not spread out. How spread out the samples within each cluster are can be measured by the inertia. Intuitively, inertia measures how far samples are from their centroids. You can find the precise definition in the scikit-learn documentation. We want clusters that are not too spread out, so lower values of the inertia are better. The inertia of a k-means model is measured automatically when any of the fit methods are called and is available afterwards as the inertia attribute. In fact, k-means aims to place the clusters in a way that minimizes the inertia. Here is a plot of the inertia values of clusterings of the iris dataset with different numbers of clusters. Our k-means model with three clusters has relatively low inertia, which is great. But notice that the inertia continues to decrease slowly. So what's the best number of clusters to choose? Ultimately, this is a trade-off. A good clustering has tight clusters, meaning low inertia, but it also doesn't have too many clusters. A good rule of thumb is to choose an elbow in the inertia plot. That is, a point where the inertia begins to decrease more slowly. For example, by this criterion, three is a good number of clusters for the iris dataset. In this video, you've learnt ways to evaluate the quality of a clustering. In the next video, you'll learn to use feature scaling to make your clusterings even better. For now, let's practice.